Welcome to the Music Business Insights Podcast. I'm your host, Orlando Alvarez, and if you're desperate to break into the music business and want to hear tips and advices from insiders, this podcast is for you. You'll be able to discover from the professionals themselves what it takes to do what they do and where to start if you're a beginner. Are you ready? Let's go. Welcome to the podcast, guys. This is going to be a fun podcast today. I have with me Louis Vanderbalk. He's from New Brunswick in Canada. Well, he's not from there, but I'm going to let him go into that in a second in the intro. But he does marketing and with a focus on SEO for businesses. And although he's not precisely in the music industry, I wanted to bring him to the podcast because he have really good insights into why marketing is important. Because it doesn't matter what are you doing or what industry are you on, you need to touch marketing and you need to touch all of this stuff. Please, Luis, introduce yourself to the audience and let them know who you are. Yeah, man. Appreciate the opportunity. Excited to be here and chat. Louis Vandervoft here, born in New Hampshire, as you alluded to in the intro there. So born in the States in New Hampshire. We moved up when I was three and I've lived in New Brunswick here, just on the other side of Maine because no one knows where the provinces are up here in Canada. But I'm just on the other side of Maine here, across the border, and I grew up on a farm, went to university, got a degree in mechanical engineering, graduated in 2019. We had gotten married in, while I was getting my degree. We had a kid like two months after I graduated, and I realized really quickly mechanical engineering was just not going to be my career choice that would fit with our goals of the family. We, wanted, we knew at the time we wanted to have four kids. We have four kids now. Four kids under four and a half years old. So it's pretty much a circus. You'll probably hear them, you know, running around upstairs a little bit in the background of the recording. But I realized really fast, I don't think I want to be an employee just going, clocking in and clocking out. It's not going to give me the opportunity to go to the kids' games. At the time, you know, it was lots of doctor's appointments back and forth, you know, when they're newborn. And I was like, this just isn't going to work. So I started looking at different options, things that you could do online. I'd met a guy in school in university who was doing drop shipping. And I was like, that's really cool. He was doing 30K a month. And I was like, this is just insane. What is, what is happening here? So I looked into drop shipping, realized quickly it wasn't for me. Mm-hmm. I realized that I couldn't be the person pushing consumerism on the masses. It just mm-hmm. didn't line up with, you know, I, I just couldn't do that for years and feel good about it. So I started getting uh, served with ads because I was looking into these different courses. And one of the ads caught my attention and it kind of matched my love of the trades because I grew up doing construction through high school and a bit after high school. And I just jumped in. I jumped into the course. We took uh, money we had saved for a bathroom renovation at the time and I put it into that course. And the rest is history. You know, a year after that, I went full time into the marketing agency, focusing on websites, SEO, and whatnot for home service businesses. But along the way, I've just gathered so much. I've really developed a love and gathered so many tidbits around marketing in general. Mm-hmm. This is the service I get paid for is SEO and websites. But outside of the box thinking when it comes to marketing is what I'd love to bring across in this episode because there's, it can apply to a plumber. It can apply to a roofer. It can apply to someone in the music industry. It can apply to a photographer or videographer. It's starting to think like a marketer. I like to say, you know, if you can have the mentality of being a hunter, not a gatherer. Mm-hmm. A lot of business owners are order takers. They just want someone to turn on the ads, run the ads. They're going to pay them. And then they're going to take the orders. And oftentimes they're not even great at taking orders when they have that mentality because they don't call clients back. Mm-hmm. They're not call, following up, et cetera. But yeah, that's a bit of background, a little bit long winded, but uh, that's a bit about me and, and kind of what got me to this point standing here with you. No, I love that. I love that because there's so much upside to marketing and it's ridiculous. I mean, I'm a music produ- producer and I'm not afraid to say that right now, my main goal and actually my main income right now, it's coming actually from videography and marketing and all this side. And it's unbelievable how much uh, upside that has, you know, that world has. And I think people miss that opportunity as well, especially music producers. They go into, okay, this is my bunker. I do music on my own studio. And I don't do anything else. If they don't realize how they're missing the biggest part of their business because this is not about, okay, you're talented. 
Okay. You know what you're doing and this applied to any industry. Okay. So you're really good at what you do. That can be, you know, from construction to music, whatever it is, you're really good at that. Now, what you do to put that on the map and to put that in front of other people is what marketing is for. And counting that you have a good brand, good presence, and you know your messaging, this is what propels you to go places, right? And that applies across industry, doesn't matter. You need to do this stuff. That's why people like Gary Vaynerchuk, you see them, you see him actually speaking with everyone, musicians, people who do business of every kind. And because the world nowadays moves around, how can I market my stuff better? How can I position myself better in some more people actually discover me? And I want to go to into the first question, actually, which is some misconceptions. What are some mi common misconceptions businesses have about marketing and how those misconceptions can affect their success? Do you have any insights on that? Yeah, I think a lot of people just want to turn on a tap. You know, they want a faucet that they can just turn on and the water starts flowing. The leads start flowing. The people start banging on their studio door. Mm -hmm. In the case of music producers, well, you don't really want them banging on when you're recording, but you yeah. get the idea, right? People mm -hmm. coming to you, it's just a flick of a switch. It's not like that. Right now, it used to be about who you knew. You know, it's all about who you know, right? That's what people said. Mm -hmm. Now, I believe it's turning to, or has turned already to, it's not about who you know, it's who knows you. Mm -hmm. It's about whose attention you have, whether you're putting up a video, whether you're putting up new music, whether you're putting up some sort of post on social media about the work that you do as a contractor, whether it's showing up on Google when someone's searching for roofing or plumbing or whatever the case may be, right? Mm. It's not about who you know anymore. It's about who knows you. And so marketing in the context that we're talking about it today is how can you get in front of the people that need to see your services or that could take advantage of your services? How can you start to help people know you, know what you're about, know your core values, know what makes you tick, know your technical prowess, know all these things about you. I think there's, I think there's different angles you can take it as a business. If you can do all of those things, yeah. then you're the most well-rounded. But a lot of people have this misconception that you just turn on the faucet, you turn on the ad, you put up a website and instantly you're going to have leads flowing through. You put up a Google business profile, you put a video on TikTok. Life's not like that in most cases. Mm -hmm. You have to be consistent. You have to be strategic. You have to but consistency is probably the hardest thing for people. They're like, oh, let me try yeah. this one thing. I want to do reels for two days. And if I don't get go viral, then it's clearly TikTok is not the platform for me. Or yeah. I'm going to, you know, put something up on SoundCloud and, you know, see if I get a thousand listens in the first two minutes, right? Hmm. That's not how the world works. You've got to be consistent, strategic, and go to the right places. Where's your ideal audience? As a music producer, it might not be a Google business listing or a website. It, there's other avenues there, right? So find the audience and experiment with it. Experiment with being different. Don't be afraid to be different. I think as people, we're afraid to be different. We could go down a whole topic, subtopic of the schooling system, but we're trained to all be the same. And we're trained to kind of get our knuckles wrapped if we go out of line, right? That's mm. the first 20 years of our life. And so when it comes to business, oftentimes entrepreneurs and business owners were those people that kind of went out of line naturally. And that's why they do well. But as a business owner, you've got to think about how can I stand out? How can I be different? How can I be someone that is interesting in a way that not only do people know you, but they remember you when they need you? Hmm. That's super interesting. Probably not a good idea going into the, into the schooling rabbit hole, though. Although I, I agree with you, we're uh, programmed to think about certain things in a way and don't get out of that box. You know, in a sense, I'm glad I didn't grow up here in the States and I have another perspective and coming here to the States. So originally, a little bit of my backstory, actually, uh, for you, because I know we didn't have uh, much time to talk about that. I'm from Cuba. So a lot of, you know, music related yeah, right. stuff with Cuba and coming here to the States just open all the doors because Cuba is, it's just crazy on that doors side. Doors are open and your mindset is different too, right? You yeah. You come with a, a different hustle mindset. You have an advantage it, over a lot of people. 
Yeah, it's completely different. So I started learning everything that I could, start reading a lot, start doing what I supposed to do, it's not losing time, right? Yeah. And all this leads to that because what people don't get and also businesses I, I see is, okay, this is going to make me lose time. That's one of the misconceptions. Marketing is just throwing money down the, you know, down the pipes and just making me lose time. And again, you can get to that point though, if you don't do it the right way. But the common misconception is that, yeah, I'm going to lose time doing this. And on the contrary, it's quite the opposite. If you pay attention to marketing, what's going to come along the road is, okay, this is actually playing to help you. And on the music business side, people underestimate how consistency, it's what you said, also plays a key role into all of this. So a little quick backstory. I started, I have two YouTube channels, music production YouTube channels. I post every Friday now, and it's one video a week, just one video a week. That's the bare minimum for anyone getting into YouTube. Out from that, okay, when I started doing that, that got me my first job in marketing from those YouTube channels. And again, let me pay the picture for you. We're talking about music production channels. We're not talking marketing channel. We're not talking any of that, but because I was doing that, I was putting the content out there that got me a job in marketing as well. It got me a job doing uh, videos and posting and this stuff for other businesses. So just see the upside of that. Consistency leads you there. Now, along the road, now I got quite often people on my email, and I mean people, companies, okay? So for music producers out there, this is key. If you want brand deals and you want to work with companies, and for us, it's, you know, those plugging companies, they make the products, the stuff that you use to uh, tweak the music, right? Those plugins and plugin companies, once you have content, when, once you have a presence online, they start reaching out to you. And I've been blessed to work with, you know, I had stuff featured by Slate Digital and a bunch of other big companies as well. And big people in the music industry as well, paying attention and sometimes leaving comments on my YouTube channel. And I'm like, what in the world? Here's what happens. A bunch of other companies reach to you because you're putting out the content, you're doing the marketing, you're marketing yourself, right? And this is the key aspect for music producers. If you market yourself well, you won't have to chase anyone. They will come to you. Okay, that's what marketing is for. Is you don't have to go out and chase people. And that's what you're saying pretty much in that sense. And from that, now the most recent one, someone in my comments asked me about a plugin and if it was worth it to upgrade to that plugin. And I didn't have the full version of that plugin. I had the free version, right? So what I did was just wrote an email to these guys, to this company with the with that video I made, which has, I don't know, 6,500 views, which some people might think it's not much. Some people might think it's a lot as well. I don't like to, you know, to count views. I like to count results, right? And from that, when I send them to them, they told me, yeah, we saw that video. We really love it. Here's the full version. And that's it. I mean, I avoided paying for the full version of the plugin for myself. But the way I wrote the email, it's no, I, I just want a limited version at least so I can review it on the channel. You know, you don't need to give me this for free. And I was ready to pay for the plugin if I needed to. So you need to put investment into this. Okay. You need to invest in your career. But if you reach to companies, the upside is that they might give you this stuff for free. Marketing is to attract people to you. So you actually, you hit on a really good point there, or, or you triggered something in my mind that that's so key when you're first starting out. If you're just getting into something, 
Mm -hmm. Start putting out content, start doing work in the music production sphere. See if you can connect with someone and do work for free. Mm -hmm. Just get content, just to start putting out your, your stuff. Maybe you don't produce music for yourself. Maybe you're looking for other people to help them produce their own music. Reach out to people, see what jobs you can do for free. Same mm -hmm. with service businesses. I didn't get into this in the intro, but one of the things that really was a ton of fun and allowed me to flex my marketing muscles and really grow them a bit in actual experience was in 21, I helped start and found a junk removal company, company here locally. So mm -hmm. now I could start doing all the things I was telling my clients to do and be like, hey, mm -hmm. see, it works, right? And so I got to really get those creative juices flowing. And one of the things we did was we did work for free for a guy who did video. Mm -hmm. And he did a whole video of us doing a whole job, did an awesome review, had his kids in the video. And we used that like within the first three weeks, I think it was, we had that video. And we used it as an ad on Facebook and it, he was well known in the area. And so we built our brand on his brand. We built our brand on his video mm -hmm. that we would have had to pay you know, a fair bit for if we were to actually pay someone. But you can do work for free for reviews. You can do work for free for products. You can do work for free to get your name out there, to build goodwill. Um, Taylor Swift is an excellent example of this. Mm. She didn't, uh, not specifically doing work for free that I know of, but she did, she really focused on engaging with her audience. That was the way she's built such a cult following, really, mm -hmm. was she responded to all the comments on her videos, all the comments on her YouTube, all the comments on her social media. And she would just spend hours doing that. And she built that goodwill. And you can do the same on your YouTube channel, on whatever platform you're on, responding to your audience, working to build up that no and trust factor. Mm -hmm. That's marketing and it doesn't have to cost anything. There's so many different facets to it. We think paid ads often when we think marketing, but there is, there's that element of grassroots that you can do that only you can do by building your brand, your, you know, people's knowledge of what you can do. Yeah, I think I heard Gary Vaynerchuk actually talking about Taylor Swift. Here's a mega superstar, right? The upside of doing something like what she does for some of her fans, which is crashing one of their birthday parties or going to some of these, you know, fans places and, and showing up. What is the upside for her? That's not producing anything for her monetarily, you know, in uh, that moment, in that moment, but the marketing of that is okay. This is a super mega star that show up to my door. So what happens is that that fan, it's going to be a for life fan. Not only that, they're going to tell all their friend, friends, they're going to show that video everywhere. All their friends who know this person is going to start talking about Taylor Swift. They're going to share with their friends. Oh, do you saw this person who I know will be with Taylor Swift because, it, and it's a snowball. And once you get to the top of that, it's just unbelievable. What you create, the repercussions of doing that for them, it's, it's just marketing, smart marketing the right way. I'm, I'm going to draw it out a little bit. Yep. So think about it. Let's say music production. That's what, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of your audience is. My wheels are turning right now as we're talking. And I, I hope that if nothing else, this episode creates some sort of, oh, okay, I can go out and I can do this and I can do that and, and connects the dots a little bit for you. Mm -hmm. So think about it from a music production standpoint. What if you could connect with an artist who then you guys come up with an idea you could do a song, maybe it's something around the community, maybe it's just a small piece, but it's, it's connected around something that everyone knows, likes, and trusts, some um, social movement, something in the community that resonates with people. Hmm. You could be uh, the brains and the, you know, making that happen for this artist and with this artist. So you're going to ride on their known trust, depending on how, you know, well-known they are. And then you're going to ride on the fact that people are endeared to whatever cause that you're doing. What could, what magic could happen there if you could do something like that? You're doing it for free. Maybe they're going to pay you a little bit, whatever. Um, but you're doing it to get the word out there, to be the person behind this movement because people work on emotion, right? Mm. Uh, when we were starting in a couple of niches, I would go into the Facebook groups and give away a website, like mm. a 5k website. People, most people at the beginning are like, oh, this is a spam, right? You know, it's a scam. Mm. Don't do it. And so it created a lot of buzz and we got a lot of entrants. We got a winner. It was real. We built their website and then we'd reach out to everybody else that entered 
and get a lot of business off of that. So of course it was calculated, but it was also a goodwill move to get into the into that industry, into that niche. So you can do this with any industry. So it's, it's just something to think about. And, and if nothing else, start thinking about how you can start creating an impact in your area of expertise in the market that you want to go into by doing things like that. Yeah, it's that got my wheels actually turning as well. Getting out of your comfort zone as a music producer, the thing that you think is the least thing that is going to work or the most outlandish thing that you can do, for example, you partnering up with a company that does something completely different. And that's what I'm seeing now, you know, many brands collaborating with things outside of their ballpark. But what that creates is that, okay, these people have a following, then that combines with your following and people who are your fans who love this other product as well are going to connect the two things and then it's just massive. The upside of that is just ridiculous. Look at Vans, yeah. the shoe brand, right? Look at now it's ubiquitous that when you think of a clothing company, you think of athletes. But mm -hmm. Vans was one, I believe, that pioneered this in the when, the when they first came out. They started working with surfers, bikers, skaters, and they kind of developed that for them as a way to push their brand forward. And, and it, now it's normal in the, in the sports and clothing industries to do that. But think about that in your industry. How can you do that? How can you combine with someone or something that people love and, and rock it out? Yeah, I mean, okay, so think about this. Music is everywhere, right? Music affects everything. And ads, when you see an ad, 50% of it is music. It's audio. It's what you hear that makes you uh, feel that emotion. Some of these ads is just pure music with text on screen. Just think about that. And how can you tap into that and for example, okay, let's, let's put a, a real example. You're a Latin music producer, right? Just go to a Latin cuisine restaurant and offer them to do, I don't know, a video and some music for their business, right? Yeah. And do a mini ad for that and just give it away for free and post it on social media. Have Ooh. you come across Joey Yak in, on social media? Uh, I don't think I have. I'll have to connect you guys because mm. he is someone that's done this. So Dan Henry is a, a very well-known marketer, right? Mm. And he created, I, I don't remember exactly how the story went, but that was his whole shtick. He, he creates videos and ads and music um, as well. Um, I just kind of thought of this as we were going, but he would create a, a mini video or a script for a video and he'd send it to someone and be like, hey, I thought of this. Um, I want to shoot this video for you free of charge. Mm did that. I don't know if, I don't remember if it was completely free of charge with Dan Henry, but he basically gave all the juice up front, mm. you know, squeezed the whole orange, gave it to Dan Henry. And then he ended up flying down to Florida shooting a video. I think it was called boats and holes. It was like, you know, showing off his new course that he was just putting out and it, it crushed in the Facebook ads for Dan. And he just brought in a ton of money, but Joey has done that in multiple occasions. He's, he's partnering with someone whose uh, husband just died in a drunk driving accident. Mm -hmm. um, and he's doing it completely for free. He's getting people to donate to her, but he's mm -hmm. doing a video and a, and a music ad to promote awareness of drunk driving. There's ways that you can do this. And it's, mm -hmm. it's creating so much uh, awareness for his brand. Mm -hmm. Highly recommend following him for anybody in the music or video industries. He's, uh, he's a force to be reckoned with. Send me the info. I, I want to put that into I will. the podcast I will. as well. I'll connect, I'll connect with you guys up after. And I can do that for people actually to follow too. I, I want to put it in the description. That leads me to my next question for people who underestimate marketing. Why do you think people still underestimate the power of marketing and branding? And what can you do to change that mindset? I think it's always something they're going to get to eventually. It's just like, oh, uh, you know, I got to focus on sales right now. And I'm going to put that off until next week. And then it becomes next year and then next, you know, five years, right? Most people, I think, don't understand the power of it. I see the mm -hmm. same thing with websites. You know, in the service industries, if you don't have a website and Google business listing, you're just going to lose money. You're not going to get mm -hmm. to where you need to go. Same with branding and marketing. If you're not doing that, you're losing out on a ton of potential business, a ton of potential connections. 
in your area, if you're not networking, if you're not connecting with people, it's all marketing, right? It's marketing yourself as a brand. It's marketing your business as a brand. It's marketing what you do. And a lot of people, they just hang back. They're either scared to get on camera, which is Mm. such a great way to differentiate yourself nowadays. They're scared to be consistent on social media. They're scared to put in the work to do what they need to create content in the music world side of things. You know, they're just scared and they don't have the knowledge of where it can get them to push them past that fear of what they need Mm -hmm. to do. I think that in a nutshell is what I see the most with people. Yeah. Well, (laughs) we need to get rid of that uh, fear and I get it. I mean, it's (laughs) when I... Uh, first started my channel, my YouTube channel. Um, and my wife actually told me, it's, do, do you think this is going to work? I mean, these people who do YouTube, they have millions of followers and they already, what, <laughs> why do you think this is going to work? And I'm, I'm just- They started you know, at zero. Yeah. They started I mean, at zero too, right? I, I know, but what everyone sees is that everyone is up there. They don't see the first 10 years. And yep. here's the, for people out there, you see that number toss around time and time again, but I've seen it firsthand where things get rolling. It's when you pass that 10 year mark and it's not a fake out number. It's how long it takes for you to actually be proficient at one thing, learn what you need to do and actually uh, build something meaningful and on audience and your, you know, social media presence and all this stuff. So when I, are you going to start, you know, it's a point. Yeah. You got to start sometime. Alex Tormozzi talks a lot about long time horizons. You know, mm-hmm. we're so focused on what's going to be next week, what's going to be next month. But what if we start building with, you know, something over here? Mm-hmm. What if we start building what we're doing now? What if we start building the business for the next 10 years? What if we start that book today? Even if it mm-hmm. takes us three years to write. What if we start that YouTube channel, even if it takes three years to get any views on it, aside from your mom? Now, what if we started doing those things and thinking more long-term, what could happen, mm-hmm. right? He wrote an incredible book, six hours a day for two years. Yeah. That's a lot of long-term commitment. And I bet there were days that he didn't want to do it, but he just kept doing the thing that he knew he needed to do to get to where he needed to go. Yeah. And for my audience, I know there's so many talented people out there and they, um, I want to get into something a little bit controversial for some. It's not controversial for me, but you see people like, I don't know, Bad Bunny, which is ridiculous. Okay, musically speaking, and I'm going to say it because I got to be honest with my audience and and with myself as well. It's the worst music you can possibly make and the worst lyrics you can possibly make. Yet, Forbes just call him the king of pop. Let's uh, forget about uh, Michael Jackson right now for a second. This guy is it. And I was laughing so hard at that because I have musician friends that are absolutely amazing and they laugh at that a lot. Thinking about that, here's what happens. You have these very talented people out there with zero audience because they don't care about marketing. Yet you have a really the worst artist possibly. And I'm going to say it. I don't care because I know what I'm talking about. I study music and I know what real music sounds like. It's not Bob Bunny. Okay. And that said, what happens in that case is that he has a lot of marketing behind him, the, the industry pretty much pushing his content and playing in his favor and doing all this stuff. To the point that he's becoming, you know, this huge thing, which he's not in reality, but it's there, you know? It's marketing. It's It's marketing. marketing. People remember him, whether he's remember him, we're talking about him, right? It's working. Exactly. It's working. And here's what people need to understand. doesn't matter how good you are. You can be hyper talented. You can be the best of the best. If you don't put content out there, nobody's going to know you. Okay. That's it. It's the way that you need to play the, this game. It's exactly like 
You need to put content out there. You need to put yourself out there because I might not be the best producer ever, but I'm getting the brand deals. I'm working with the companies. I'm doing this stuff that people say, oh, you know, how do you do that? And I mean, it's simple. It's not, I, I haven't played with an A-list uh, artist. I don't care. I care about my audience. I care about providing good value to my audience. And in the meantime, putting content out there for people. And that gets me places. That gets brands. That gets people interested in what I'm doing. And people in my DMs, in Instagram and on email saying, hey, we want to work with you. I see what you're doing. This is great for a brand. And you don't need to chase anyone anymore. People are going to start chasing you. Guys, again, I'm not big in any way. I'm like this moment. Okay. My YouTube channel, one of them in Spanish has 1,300 uh, people now. The other one has almost 2,500 at this point. I don't, I don't keep track of that. I don't care. It's a small channel by any means. It's like super small. Doesn't matter. Do you think brands matter about that? No. Like they care that you're putting content consistently, that it's good, looks good. You have a good visual presence, you know what you're doing, that's all they care about. And people are start paying attention to you. It comes down to that consistency, right? Mm -hmm. It's small right now by whatever measurement you're, you know, compared to watch, right? Yeah. But, you know, you keep putting in that consistency and it's going to grow. Exactly. So last question for you, small businesses and people just starting out, they might have limited budgets, okay? Because not everyone can afford uh, a lot of the marketing work and a lot of the money that you need to put into this. You need to be able to invest in your career. But besides that, what can they do, small businesses and people with really small budgets or not at all, what can they do that is a cost-effective marketing strategy that they can start right away? So there's a ton of free stuff, actually. It's a great mm -hmm. question. I love this question. I, I push people away all the time from us. I say, you're not ready for us. Exactly. Yeah. Go, go do this homework and get yourself set up and get a little bit more revenue coming in before you come back. Hmm. You can set up a Facebook page. That's free. You can set up a Google business listing. That's free. You can make a Pinterest page. You can start sharing stuff on there. You can set up Twitter. You can set up Instagram. You can set up all the different, you know, whatever it is relevant to your industry. You can set those all up. You can set up a Yelp profile. You can set up all these profiles for free, optimize them. And what do I mean by optimize? Get a picture on there. Get some pictures of you, your team, you know, your equipment, whatever industry you end up being in. Talk about what you do. Talk about all the different services that you can provide. Get, start getting some reviews on those platforms. Even if at the beginning, I don't ever recommend buying reviews. But mm. if you can reach out to friends and family that know you for character reviews, they say, hey, you know, he's been fantastic. I've known him for 20 years. Super stand-up guy. Even a character review is a great way to start. You start seeding those reviews. And then as you do jobs, you can start getting, you know, reviews from clients. But just that is a fantastic way to get your presence out there and to start getting, you know, getting yourself out there. Make a LinkedIn profile, optimize that, start connecting with your ideal clients on there. That's great for music as well, but it's fantastic for service industries. It's fantastic for people in marketing like myself. Start connecting with people. Jump on a lineable. Same sort of deal. You can get, start connecting with people. There's groups in almost all of these social medias, Facebook, LinkedIn, Alignable. There's groups on there where you can you know, connect with like-minded people. Start collaborating with your competition. Probably one of the biggest ways. If you're starting out and you can collaborate with someone like two or three times a week, connect with a different person every other day, quick 15-minute call. What do you do? How can I help you? How can I support you? What's your ideal client? Then they're going to ask, what do you do? And you can say, hey, this is what I can do. And if they're established, they might have jobs come through that are smaller than they want to take right now, and they can pass them over to you. Mm -hmm. This is all free. We haven't spent a dollar yet. Mm -hmm. We've just spent time, right? And typically when you're starting, you've got more time than money. Right? Exactly. So the, the collaboration thing is so key. Start doing work for free for those people that you're collaborating with. If they're like higher up and more well-known in the industry, see if you can collaborate with them, do some work for free, give them some value so that then they start to think of you as someone that's valuable. They're going to start passing you jobs. They're going to start talking about you to their clients or their friends or their whatever the case may be. 
But if you do all those things, even before you have a website, you're setting yourself up for success. There's a ton of value in just those few things. And thank you for sharing that. I love when you said competitors and you do quote unquote for people yeah, listening. I did. And people, I want this to be on audio as well. He did kind of, you know, quote unquote competitors. And I love that because here's what I learned. There's a guy, he's, his name is Graham Cochran. He's, a, he's massive in the music industry world. He by no means have the list of, you know, work with A-list artists, although he has some now, but he didn't for years on end and he got massive. But what he says is that his point of view about that is I don't have competitors, I have collaborators. If you start switching your mindset into, oh, okay, everyone is out to get me and I have this competition and I need to beat the comp, you don't need to beat anyone. You need to actually be the person who, oh, you know, I love what you're doing. I want to see if I can help you. I do this stuff as well. And I mean, how can I provide value to you? How can we collaborate? Again, don't offer anything th that if you're going to offer a free something, don't do it with the mentality of, oh yeah, I'm going to get something in return. That's not actually given. That's, I'm opposed to that. But go giving value for free because it's the right thing to do because if it's meaningful and you're start seeing this thing overflowing in your favor. That's the way it works. And think about that. Think about collaboration. Even though I do marketing as well, for example, I don't see you as competition. I, I want to learn from you. I want to hang out with you so I learn what I don't know. And in the meantime, I mean, if I can offer value to you, I, I that would be great because you learn as well. And this is the way it's supposed to work. Collaboration is more important than thinking that everyone is your competitor and everyone is out to get you. And the reason that you're not getting places is because everyone is, you know, opposed to you. And it's easy to fall into that mindset, but I advise you against it. It's not fun. It's not the right way to do it. So I agree. Agree wholeheartedly with that. This has been absolutely amazing. I want to ask you, where can people find you? So we can put that into the podcast as well, because there might be businesses out there that need websites, that need optimization on that side. And we didn't talk about SEO, which is your main, you know, uh, is the main stuff that you do actually for, for businesses. But I want to bring you again to the podcast, if you don't mind just to talk about SEO, because I think that that's also going to be beneficial to music producers because there are things that you can do on your websites and on, on the back end that, you know, might be valuable. I don't know, maybe some tips Absolutely. they can implement. So if we can do one about that and just leave it as SEO, that would be great for everyone actually to listen to this and actually get something valuable out of it. So for where can people find you? Yeah, no, this has been fun. I appreciate the opportunity. So lewisvandervoek.com uh, is, it kind of has a link to everything. My mm -hmm. social medias, our website, Facebook, LinkedIn, all the places you can find me online. lewisvandervoek.com, we'll put it in the show notes and whatnot. I'll send it over to you, but that's probably the easiest way to get in touch with me. Thank you so much, Lewis, for doing this podcast with me and, and sharing a little bit of the marketing wisdom as well, getting to combine our audiences, our mindsets to show a little bit of, of what marketing actually can do. And we're an example of that, getting people to know you. And also, in the meantime, you're not only building your audience, you're building your credibility as well. You're building your business. So that's what I want to get my audience to, to do. I mean, they can do so many stuff, even for free, that it's ridiculous. Nowadays, you have ChatGPT, we didn't talk about AI, but you have, no, you oh, my deep God. On. oh my God, you have AI, you have free tools like left and right, whatever you want nowadays. Everything for free nowadays is so good that I wish we had that 10 years ago. Again, thank you for jumping in. I appreciate 
talking to you. Really hoping we can do another one about SEO. Let's do it. Let's do and, it. And and uh, we need to schedule that for sure uh, because that will be fun. And thank you for being on the podcast today. For sure, my pleasure. Much appreciated. <laughs>